Hey there, Nick Dunitakis here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a very specific Ansible int error called no handler. Chances are, if you've worked with Ansible in the past, you've seen this error at least once, or maybe a couple dozen times. So I was doing a bit of maintenance work on some of my Ansible roles to help prepare for the application deployment course I'm working on, and I noticed I was getting a couple of these no handler linting errors, and usually they're really easy to fix. And by the way, if you're brand new to Ansible, don't worry about it. We're going to take a look at some code soon, so this is not going to get too abstract. But the idea with this specific error is, chances are you have a when condition where you're checking to see if something changed, when really you can just swap that out to use an Ansible handler, which is the built-in functionality from Ansible to allow you to run something when something changes, like a specific task that you attach the handler to. And that's a really, best, uh, really good best practice to adhere to. But once in a while, you will potentially come across a task like this one where transferring over that when condition into a handler just becomes either, I don't want to say impossible because it's always possible, but it becomes like very non-intuitive or very hard to work around that. And this ended up uh, requiring me to think in a different way to solve this problem. And that's basically why I'm making this video. And we'll get to that um, when we get to that. But for now, let's take a look here at the task itself that actually caused this error to come up. And that is over here down on line 28. So the TLDR about Ansible, by the way, like it's going to run through this file top to bottom, executing all of these tasks and run some uh, type of command or whatever module that we want to do. I'm not going to get super deep into the woods about Ansible basics here, but you know, for this specific task, the basic idea here is I want to run a custom command, which happens to be a shell script that I created here, which is generated by this template module. And we'll look at this script in a bit, but the basic idea here, right? Ansible level, like one-on-one -on -one things, it's going to run through this task. It's going to be like, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and ex execute the shell script uh, with these arguments, whatever. But the real important thing here is this when condition. So what the way Ansible works is uh, this needs to evaluate to true for this command to run. If this happens to evaluate to false, this whole when condition, then this is going to be skipped over and not run. And if this when condition were uh, a little bit more simplified, like if I just remove that or here, like this is the specific part that is causing the error that we were just looking at before. Because it's saying like, okay, cool, you have this variable here that you're registering on a template module. And we're basically saying, you know, if this template uh, happens to change based on you defining or switching a variable somewhere, you know, it happens to change on disk, then go ahead and generate a new dhparams file. And that's like, the anti-pattern, right? You should be using a handler. And you know, if that or condition weren't there, that would be really easy because you can just take this whole task here, drop it into a handler, and then you can use like this notify syntax here uh, and put that here instead of this register. And there you go, problem solved, linting error goes away. But that's not the reality that we're living in here with this task because this task actually has a more complicated condition because it's not only checking to see if the template changed to generate a new dhparams file, uh, diffie hellman params that is, but it also is going to do it when the file itself doesn't exist because on the first run, then it may not exist. Like there are cases where this won't exist. And how do you transfer this pattern into using the handler uh, setup, right? Like you could maybe do it in certain ways. I can't think of one off the top of my head and I've been working with Ansible for like seven years now. At least I can't think of a solution that's really straightforward. So what I ended up doing was just uh, taking a different approach on this one. and. It's interesting because once you start using Ansible, it feels like you have this golden hammer and Ansible can do everything, right? And in some ways it sort of kind kind of can, like you can use Ansible for a number of different things, right? You can use it to set up your infrastructure. You can set it, set it up to provision your servers. You can even do application deployments with it. But over the years, uh, I've kind of, I don't know, I don't do all of those things with Ansible because I feel like there's other tools that do certain things uh, a little bit nicer. For example, I really like using Terraform when it comes to setting up my infrastructure, like literally creating like uh, a VPS on a cloud provider and any other associated infrastructure, like load balancers, uh, firewalls and stuff like that. But I will definitely absolutely use Ansible to provision the server itself. And what I mean by that is like, let's just say that you have a server on the cloud, root access, nothing's installed. Well, Ansible is a great tool, in my opinion, to actually get the tools that you want and services that you want installed on that server. You could use it with Docker as well. In other words, like set up your whole server uh, the way you'd like and then run your application within Docker. But also when it comes to like application deployment, I don't like using Ansible to actually do the deploy. I like doing my deploys based on running uh, like a git push and just have CI maybe uh, do what it needs to do to deploy the application. Depends if you know you happen to be running Docker Compose on a single server or like a Kubernetes cluster. But I feel like you know I kind of don't like using Ansible for the deployment. But I love using Ansible for setting up a single server or something like that to get to the point where it can actually accept deployments through Git or other mechanisms, right? 
But where I'm getting uh, with this one is solving this specific problem required thinking in a way where it's like you can't really maybe lean on using Ansible for everything. And this is a, a really important uh, lesson for me or a takeaway for me because back when I was using Ansible seven years ago, you know, I definitely had that golden hammer approach, Ansible for everything, right? And uh, one of my really close friends, a sysadmin that I've known for, I don't know, like seven or eight years now, basically, uh, I would say taught me a lot about Ansible initially. And we used to have some back and forths on IRC chatting about things like this. And it was interesting because uh, this was the only linting error left in my whole code base because the other ones were really easy to fix. And I just, you know, threw this example at him and I just wanted to see like how he would solve it. And it's funny because it's like, it's so obvious now that I look at it, but like, I didn't think about that initially. Maybe I would have gotten there eventually, but yeah, it was just really nice that within like five seconds of him looking at it, he's like, why don't you do this uh, condition here to see if the script exists? Like, why don't you put that in the actual shell script itself? And then this condition goes away. And like we talked about before, then turning it into a handler is super easy. And that's exactly what I did. So let me open up my uh, DH params, the non old file, like the actual real one, like the new version of this one. And if we take a look here, notice that the generate Diffie Hellman's param uh, task is no longer here. That's because it's tucked away in a handler. And we'll take a look at that in a second here. But uh, yeah, the basic idea here, and actually, I don't even think that's script. Yeah, this doesn't even need to be there. Cool. So yeah, going back to what we went over before, all we have to do is attach a handler to this template. That other actual task that used to be here is now in the handler. And instead, now uh, we just flush the handlers immediately. This is another like Ansible one-on-one -on -one thing. Uh, typically, handlers will run at the very end of the play. But in this case, they need to execute right now because future uh, roles or tasks in that play will depend on this Diffie Hellman file to exist. So it needs to happen right now. But let me go to the handlers for this PKI role here and we'll take a look. So we can see the when condition now has been completely removed, right? Because the if exists check is actually in the script, which we'll look at in a second here. And the other condition goes away because it's in a handler now. So the notify trigger on the template that we're just looking at here is actually uh, the condition itself. Like there's no need to explicitly set it. But now let's see, yeah, take a look at this script here. Uh, where's it at? Yeah, PKI generate DH params. So DH params, this one over here. Yep, there we go. And uh, the old version of the script just didn't have this if condition here. And all it did was use OpenSSL to generate a DH params uh, pem file here, or DH param pem file. And all I did was just wrap this up into a condition that basically says, hey, look at this. You know, if these if this DH param path doesn't exist, you know, this file doesn't exist, then do this stuff here. If it happens to exist, then it's just not going to do anything. Exit zero, no harm, no foul, and it is all good to go. So yeah, that's basically the TLDR version of how you can break down an Ansible task so that you can use a handler instead of uh, using like an is changed. You know, sometimes it makes sense to actually drop uh, into your shell script or whatever you happen to be doing and solve the problem there. In this case, it was actually a pretty simple solution, just wasn't immediately obvious. And by the way, when it comes to talking about Ansible, uh, I did do a podcast episode recently with my buddy here. Uh, he was the one who provided me that answer there. So if you want to see how he's using Ansible to manage 40 plus servers in a data center at a medical university, then go check that out here because we chatted about that for about an hour. That was all good times. So with that said, you know, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to see more Ansible videos, let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.